happiness is beautiful It's a kind reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is Lionel Ketchian and I'm here with George Ortega and we're here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Okay, let's begin this Ketchian Ortega Happiness Dialogue number four with happiness support groups. Well, that's what we want to talk about. George, welcome and uh, it's great to be here. And uh, last time we talked about uh, happiness clubs, uh, happiness club, and we've, uh, we have one in Fairfield, Connecticut, and we began one uh, out in California in San Francisco. And uh, now uh, we're going to talk about starting happiness support groups because the difference is that uh, happiness clubs basically meet once a month and happiness support groups uh, ideally could meet once a week. And I was talking with George here and uh, George had the idea that a support group would be a good way to uh, pretty much get into understanding happiness on an individual basis, right George? Yeah, I think what happens is with the happiness clubs we can introduce a lot of people who are not familiar with happiness um, two of the principles of happiness, we can get them in touch with, with people who are also interested in becoming happier and enjoying life as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that, that's good as an, uh, as an initial forum for that. Mm -hmm. But then I think, yeah, a lot, a lot more work can be done with weekly happiness support groups. The idea is that um, we have, there are different kinds of support groups like the 12-step groups and recovery and certain kinds of groups like that, group, groups for grief and divorce, etc. Mm -hmm. But generally, generally those groups, even though they are very effective, they can be difficult. They can be mm -hmm. difficult because people are generally bringing problems into these groups. G George, I, I've got to say, I cannot agree with you more. I cannot agree with you more. In fact, I have the personal experience that many, many people, uh, in fact, let me just say that at our happiness club meetings in Fairfield, we have a, a number of wonderful people that uh, are happy, but they also have gone through trials and tribulations and, and life's problems, and that includes the worst things that can happen to a human being, and that is uh, losing loved ones. Uh, there are many people that come to meetings that have lost their uh, husband or their wife, uh, you know, within the last year or two. Uh, there are people going through divorce that attend the meeting, and these people are learning to be happy in spite of it all and to to grow and to nourish themselves and to take the benefits of happiness for themselves. I had a phone call from a woman just recently and she said to me, I've been going to support groups for her particular problem and like you say George her dilemma was that everybody had the same problem and they weren't getting out of the problem. It was like she had enough of hearing about the problem, she just wanted to move on. So our, our idea of a support group would be very different, I think, than other people's support groups because we're actually supporting growth, not supporting you with the problem that you particularly, because you know what, the problem really doesn't matter. You growing and, 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 and living and living an abundant life, that matters. Oh yeah, and again, um, the idea is that you know those groups can be effective. You know, a lot of people gain a lot of support from the other support group mm -hmm. members, and they can be very um, therapeutic, really. Yes. But this is a different approach, and actually, it's been um, been experimented on recently over the last few years by a psychologist named Giovanni Fava mm -hmm. uh, from Italy, and basically, his approach is that generally in in psychology and therapy one addresses problems and resolves them in order to become happier, to become less depressed, have less problems, resolve issues, and that'll make one happier. Okay, now, um, um, Dr. Fava's approach, and he's written several articles about this, he's demonstrated the efficacy of this, mm -hmm. is that if you make people happier, 
then the problems will d diminish and that's going to be the focus of these support groups it's not you know we are like we're human beings we're always going to have failings I mean what happens in, in general is we solve one problem then we become maybe a bit more enlightened and we realize, oh, I've got another problem <laughs> perhaps we didn't know we had, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's generally what... So there are always going to be parts of us that can be worked on, but the beauty and the value of this kind of a group is that it accepts those problems and then um, teaches us to um, become extremely ha um, happy, you know, regardless, you know, accepting ourselves and the world and everyone else as we are. Yeah, that's excellent, George. And, um as you were talking about this particular uh, 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 scientist that's doing this work, uh, uh, this doctor, uh, I'm reminded by somebody you've all heard of, and uh, his name is Dr. Richard Carlson. He's a, he, he's a PhD, and he's a psychologist. He's written, of course, the book uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, which, you know, is very popular. But he's also written maybe seven or eight other books, and so I think some of the best books written on happiness. Dr. Richard Carlson is one heck of a thinker, uh, very uh, into what we're doing, very uh, involved, very uh, ahead of the mark, I would say, in, in this whole happiness approach. And he does and says what you're just bringing up, George, and that is that if you keep concentrating on the negative, then you, you're going to end up with the problem, uh, you know, right in your face. You you need you need to be happier and as he says find happy people to model he thinks happiness is the is is the way to go in fact as a psychologist and I, I'm not saying this but Dr. Richard Carlson is saying that even therapy doesn't work as well as being happy and this is his own words uh, there are other doctors that support those ideas uh, uh, but you know we're not knocking psychology we're just saying that positive psychology is where it's at and it's something we could practice right here in our home. We're, we, you and I do it every moment of our lives, George. Oh yeah, and actually that's, that's another benefit from the support groups because mm -hmm. generally, again, the, the happiness clubs, the way we've structured them is that they're monthly to introduce people to the concept of happiness and mm -hmm. to begin to uh, introduce the principles of becoming happier. But then, you know, when you're working with a smaller group on a weekly basis, you know, interacting a lot more with the group, that's where the knowledge becomes integrated. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot more teaching goes on, and that's how um, the group members can, can develop the habit of, of being happy every moment, as, as you say, of, of making happiness the, the goal of, of, of our activities, of whatever we do. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is, yeah, with, with, with these weekly support groups, it can, um, again, it can um, take the different perspective of seeing our lives not as resolving problems, because again, there are always going to be more, but as focusing on what is good, focusing on the fact that being happy is very, very easy, and all we have to do is make the effort. So, so these, these groups just work in a, in a, in a more um, detailed, specific way at integrating this knowledge and helping it become a, a part of our everyday lives. Yeah, George, you're so right, and one of the most important aspects of, um, uh, I would say, of the, of the weekly, and that's what this would be, weekly support groups, I think the most important part is of course you're getting the experience because you, you but you're getting the conditioning on a weekly basis the, there's another fa and when I when I had my classes at Sacred Heart it was almost like a support group because it was one month two hours a, uh, a week for four weeks so that's weekly for at least a month and what happened is the principles got discussed in the first week uh, people were couldn't believe that I could be happy all the time it, not me but them and when we understood that a little bit better, we went out into the world and we let happiness, uh, let the world attack us. In other words, we went out with this idea that we made a happiness decision, so let's see what takes us off the, uh, you know, throws us off the chair. And it's learning that moment by moment during the week that, oh, I had this problem and I had that problem, but I applied something I learned from the meeting to that problem, to that situation, maybe towards that person that I have to interact with, and it worked, or, or an aspect of it worked. Then you go back to the meeting, and you share that with others. And uh, 
you, you share your knowledge, they learn, you learn more by sharing it with others, because that's how knowledge is. The, if you really want to learn something, teach it to, to someone else. And then, if you don't know, uh, about, you know, you say, gee, it didn't work, where did I, you know, uh, where did I go wrong? Then somebody else may pick up on that and really show you where if you did this instead of that, or you thought this way instead of thinking that way, you might have been able to, to deal with it better, to come out more powerful, and that's how you learn. So the support group is a great teaching method. It really, and it's fun, it's fun. That's, that's the other aspect of it that's great. It's fun and it's free. What happens is like many of us aren't very happy, but we don't necessarily qualify for therapy through our insurance plans and all because, you know, depression might be covered, but marginal happiness isn't. So a lot of times there just isn't, there aren't avenues out there for most of us to be able to, um, to really um, become happier in a supportive environment. Now, what's, what's very interesting is that in general, like this, this was um, discovered back in the 60s, um, if you have a lay person acting as a therapist, you know, giving therapy to another person, generally that person will be as effective as a trained therapist. Now, this isn't something that is, is very well known. This was like discovered again in the 60s, 70s, and um, you know, it, it's, I suppose it, it hasn't been um, promoted so much because there haven't been institutions by which to use that knowledge. Mm -hmm. But, but the 12-step the groups, the support groups that exist today are actually demonstrations of how that works. Mm -hmm. So, so these, these groups, these support groups, allow us to be therapists for each other and again working from the positive standpoint not from the negative standpoint of like well you know we have problems we have symptoms we have these kinds of like just weaknesses and, and faults that we need to address it's taking it from the the, the positive approach of, of seeing who we are at our best and um, again it, it, it's free it's something that um, that we don't have to pay for and, and that anyone can anyone can can uh, hold a support group like this it doesn't require any kind of special training mm -hmm. uh, the knowledge in the principles of happiness one can learn in a few weeks because they're they're so basic really this what we're talking about isn't about like learning um, vast <laughs> amounts of knowledge and principle mainly the thing is just learning these simple principles and then applying them and and, and of course again the, the support groups just provide that perfect structure for being able to apply them on a regular basis yeah you're so right George and um, if people want to learn more about this there's the happiness club dot com they can check that out and get a free newsletter while they're on the uh, uh, on the website but um, one of the other things about this is uh, as you're talking George I, I, I'm reminded that um, you know, you need a degree to practice psychology, but you'll never, in the world, you'll never need a license or a degree to practice kindness. And one of the aspects of what we're talking about is kindness, caring, sharing, coupled with the knowledge of happiness and how it could benefit others. But when you're happy, you're, you're compassionate. You're more compassionate to other human beings so that that compassion spills over to sharing these concepts with others. When it starts working in your life, you realize that you can gently offer it to others and or, or if people are interested you want to share that with them uh... that is a wonderful attribute of happiness because happiness as it turns out is a skill i mean that's all happiness is is a finely tuned skill of controlling yourself controlling your emotions being empowered feeling great and when you feel good i mean who would you rather hang around? Unhappy people or happy people, right, George? Oh, yeah. And like happiness being a skill. I mean, like, for example, many of us devote many hours, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, for example, learning how to play an instrument or writing or reading or watching TV or listening to music. And um, some of these are activities. Some of these are more, more like skills, like playing a piano. But we devote a lot of time to, to these things, and we do become very good at them. You know, so it's the same idea with, with happiness. It is a skill, and fortunately, it's not a skill that we have to practice for years and years before we mm -hmm. get very good at it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as, as the, um, the experiments have shown, starting in the, in the late 70s, early um, 80s, a person 
through learning certain principles and applying them can become at least 25% happier in as few as four weeks. Actually, there's this one experiment that had people just simply recite affirmations like, you know, life is great, I feel good, things are going wonderful, for 10 minutes each morning. And two weeks, after two weeks of doing that, they were about 25% happier. So, so it is a skill. It's a, it's a skill that, that we can learn. And again, the, the more we practice it, and it, it makes so much sense. Yeah, because it does. And you know, w you think about it, uh, who doesn't want to li uh, live in a better house? I mean, if you, if you could afford it. Who doesn't want to drive a better car? But what are those things? They're quality of life, and they're, and they're sort of, a, they can be an empty shell. But what we're talking about is just as important as a new car, just as important as a big house, that's the quality of our lives. I mean, that's where you live and the quality of your life. And uh, if we don't, I mean, let's put some effort into that. And it doesn't even cost any money. That's the crazy thing about this whole thing. The other aspect of the support groups that I want to share with people is a, a very important and very needed aspect in today's world. All right. You know, I'm looking at you, you're at home, you're watching TV. Okay, we're kind of disconnected. We're, we're connected a little bit. You can, you can connect with me on the, on the website, happinessclub.com. Uh, you can get my phone number, you can talk to me. We can go through all of that. But you know something? I'm not, I don't know who you are, uh, unless you've been to a meeting. Now, the wonderful thing, and the thing that we really need as human beings, is connection. We need to communicate with people. We need people. And, and that's the thing about the support group that I think is intriguing. In today's world of push buttons and video screens, we've lost touch with ourselves. If you're not in touch with another human being, you're not in touch with yourself. So it's very, and you know, thank God I never had a problem with alcohol, but I did go to a meeting with an individual, uh, an Alcoholics Anonymous, and I loved the meeting. I thought it was a beautiful meeting, caring people, sharing people, honest people. And I said to myself, you know, God forbid, but I, I almost wish I had the problem so I can go to these meetings. These people are great. And, you know, sort of kiddingly and laughing about it, what I'm saying is, what I was experience, experiencing is that at a meeting, you can get in touch with others who are sharing themselves, who are genuine, who want to help, who want to assist others, and they're sharing themselves. So that's another aspect of the support group that would be great, is a personal involvement. And where do we get that anymore, George? We don't, we don't get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not just a personal involvement in you know, any activities, because we, we mm -hmm. join different clubs, and we join churches and synagogues and different kinds of associations to get together for certain purposes. But you made a point before that we should make happiness at least as important as our house, as our, our um, cars and all. And I mean, that's an extremely important point because I mean, the purpose of our house, our car, our family, our job, our activities, everything, the purpose of all that we strive for, of all these other goals, is to make us happier. So, so obviously happiness is something that, that should be the, the goal of all these things we do, and not just the goal, but the focus of our life in general. And, and when, we, when we get together with a group of people, you know, you were talking about compassion before, we can help each other much, much more so than just doing this alone. And it just allows us to, to just share what we know. Mm -hmm. And and again, in a, in a in a small setting like a support group, I would imagine it'd be like five, ten people. Uh, um, you know, one can really become in, involved in just um, you know, on, in a personal sense, just just really helping each other and and being helped by the rest of the group. Just um, the the idea of of like bringing bringing a focus about what life is really about, you know, for the benefit of the whole group, and then, then working, working very specifically on it, you know, with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, yeah, it, it's very good in that way. Yes, and George, the other aspect of this is that if you're the kind of person, let's say, who is down and out, you, you're not happy, you feel uh, even helpless at times, then a support group could be good for you in, in, in a different way than you're thinking. You know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh yeah, that's me, I'm unhappy. I don't even want to go to the support group because I'm just not happy. Well, that's not my point. My point is that if you do go to the support group and you think about someone else, in other words, you go there and share whatever happiness you have left over with someone else, guess what? You will end up becoming happier because you're taking the focus off yourself. 
And a lot of times, our unhappiness is because we've, we've been consumed with ourselves. We, we don't know how to think about the other person. <laughs> we're, we're so caught up with ourselves and our problems that we don't realize that the other person has problems too. And if we, we become friendlier and giving with others, uh, a lot of times we are, more, are better able to deal with our own problems. So there's another reason is to actually go and offer part of our uh, better selves to others. And in doing that, in actually going and helping others out as much as we possibly can, we're helping ourselves. So that's another benefit. Oh yeah, and, and like a lot of times we consider being good and compassionate as a goal that, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we're generally taught in life that if we're good, if we're compassionate, then we're going to be rewarded by becoming happier. And that works. That does work. But mm -hmm. what they've found through experiments is that the opposite also works. And for example, they've, they've done experiments with little children. And what they've done is they've made the child happier in a certain way, let's say giving them a gift, or in mm -hmm. some way they've made that child happier for the, a certain amount of time, for a mood. And then they found that once they made the children happier, they were more compassionate to toward their uh, peers, toward the children around them. So that the idea is that um, if we care about goodness, about compassion, about each other, happiness is a very good way to, um, to make ourselves even more caring, even more compassionate. The happier we, as you were saying, the happier we become, the less concerned we are with our own lives, the more we have to give. Mm -hmm. And so, so again, like, you know, most people were generally taught in culture that we become good in order to become happier. Again, we can become much happier, and that will make us much better people. Yeah. Virtue, which is really goodness, has um, been studied all through the years, and it's the basis of religion. It's also uh, very uh, high in the, in the Greeks' uh, ideology of, you know, what's important. But virtue and happiness are synonymous. Happiness is, is goodness. In fact, uh, I don't know who said it. I didn't make this up, but there's a saying that says, uh, uh, good people are not always happy, but happy people are always good. And I think that's true. I think a happy person is a good person wanting to do good because, let's face it, the whole definition of a happy person is a person who's self-adjusted, who is friendly, and is outgoing, and he's, he wants to share things with you. So, you, you know, you need something, ask a happy person. <laughs> You're not going to ask an unhappy person. In fact, in uh, 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 at Thanksgiving, uh, the Happiness Club and the Basket Brigade, a, a number of people in the area uh, got together and we raised over $5,000. We, we, uh, we distributed 185 baskets uh, to people in the New Haven area. But you want to know who really benefited from this whole thing? We did, the volunteers. We, we got the spirit of giving, we got happiness from it. Sure, we saw people in need, but we're the ones who benefited. And in fact, there was a, a story about one individual volunteer who delivered a basket of, of food to a family and said, you know, where's your table? I'll, I'll put this basket on your table. It was Thanksgiving turkey and everything else. It was a huge bunch of stuff, plus stuff for the kids. And they said, we don't have a table. So he went back later that evening with a table for them and chairs. So, I mean... And you know, you think the story's about benefiting the person who was needy, but you know, the truth is that it was really about the volunteer who benefited. They're the ones who got happier. Because you can't give something of yourself and not get much more in return. So that was, that was really a great uh, aspect that really comes from happiness. Yeah. You were, you were talking before about happiness and, and virtue being synonymous. And um, it's interesting because Aristotle wrote a book you know, called Nicomachean Ethics. I'm sure you're yes. familiar with it. And um, he begins the book with a whole um, explanation, ex exploration of happiness. And in fact, he calls, he, he understands happiness as being the, the highest, highest good. good. Exactly. And when you think about it, it's the highest good because it's the purpose of all other goodness. I mean, we are, we are honest, we are, um, we're forthright, we're um, responsible, we're truthful. I mean, whatever 
goodness, however way we ex express our goodness and um, the way we care about goodness, why we care about goodness, is, it's all because of happiness. I mean, that's the value of goodness. So happiness, really, if one bec wants to become a very good person, becoming a very happy person is a very way to, a good way to go about it. Yeah, very true. And Aristotle is the one who really understood and surmised. I guess they didn't have TV sets back then, so he could sit there and think these things through. <laughs> and that was, he said, happiness is the highest good. And he also said that every th uh, uh, most things are a means to an end. In other words, you uh, go to work to make money so you could buy a, a car and you could, you know, you, you get married so you could uh, have somebody to, you know, keep your company. Everything in life, he said, he surmised, is a means to an end, except for one thing. And uh, over 2,000 years ago, he figured out that everything was a means to an end except happiness. That, that one thing, happiness, was a means in itself. So, so what we're saying here is, as George and I say, uh, you know, how we, how we start the program is, happiness is the point of it all. It always was and always will be. That's because this has been the same theme since Aristotle's time, and we haven't understood that yet. And that is that happiness is, is the whole reason you do anything. So if you take happiness, the whole portion for yourself now, you've, you're, you're way at the head of the class. And, and you use that as a power to live your life. You're doing what the Greeks told us 2,000 years ago, but people haven't really understood. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and like, it's not just that it's the point of it all. Happiness is all there is. I mean, when you think about it, that is like, we, we are our emotional lives. You know, we, we have our minds and we think and all, but our thoughts are pretty much tools. They're tools by which we create positive in, uh, emotions that help us to enjoy life. And really, happiness is all there is. I mean, <laughs> I mean if, if we have money, if we strive for success, those things are meaningless without happiness. And those are, they're meaningful only because they provide happiness. Now again, this is not just our personal happiness. This is about the happiness of everyone. But again, um, happiness is all there is for any of us, and that's why it should be our, our greatest focus. Um, perhaps not our only focus because there are aspects of life that we have to address out of need, but certainly, certainly our primary focus. Well, George, that's, uh, uh, I really enjoyed this evening. I thought this was a great conversation, stimulating as always, and I want to invite people to uh, uh, find out more, uh, uh, get on the uh, happinessclub.com website, and uh, well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. Be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join us again next week here on The Happiness Show and make that happiness decision. Happiness is powerful, it's our underlying need. Happiness is why we live each day. Happiness is destiny, so let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy